do you hear the yeah uh this is actually an audio wait let me see why is it not running oh sorry do you hear the audio as well no no okay okay i think i have to voice it out okay so uh this was supposed to be pre-taped but never mind uh uh, good evening, everyone. So my topic is on malignant glaucoma. And this was initially um, uh, described by Dr. Von Graffi uh, way back more than uh, 200 years ago. And it is characterized by high IOP, a shallow flat anterior chamber, and the presence of a patent with the presence of a patent peripheral iridectomy. Now, the word malignant is used. Um, uh, it's not as if it's wrongly used because malignant actually means death or deterioration. But in this case, the glaucoma is a sustained type of glaucoma, easily worsens, very difficult to treat and can progress to blindness. So it is quite apt that we probably stick to the term malignant glaucoma. Fortunately, it is quite rare. Uh, usually happens in angle closure glaucoma cases, about 2 to 4% of those undergoing trabeculectomy. And it is less frequent in those uh, cases of POAG, undergoing trabeculectomy. Women are more likely to have this condition more than men. And it's said that it's because you know, we have shallower anterior chambers. And thus, this predisposes us to the um, aqueous misdirection. Now, this malignant glaucoma can happen anytime. In, it's either intraoperatively or anytime, even months or years after surgery. And it can also be recurrent, especially if you don't treat it um, well or you don't do the definite treatment. Now, there's many different definitions. And aqueous misdirection syndrome is the commonest that you hear. It is also called capsular block, ciliovitreal block, ciliary block, subcapsular fluid entrapment, positive vitreous pressure, intraoperative fluid misdirection, infusion misdirection syndrome. So these last three um, definitions are usually, usually used um, when it occurs intraoperatively. So there are some authors who um, actually uh, decided that, you know, should, should make the definition as fluid misdirection syndrome and acute uh, is supposed to refer to those malignant glaucoma which happens intraoperatively and chronic are for those cases which um, occur uh, like the natural malignant glaucoma nature. Now, the mechanism, there are several mechanisms, but basically the end result is a uh, shallowing of the anterior chamber, and this is due to forward movements of the lens and also anterior rotation of the ciliary body forwards. And this, sorry, this actually will cause um, the sometimes the ciliary body would actually uh, touch with the lens if it is faking and with the uh, vitreous if it is significant cases and the aqueous is misdirected posteriorly into the vitreous and thus there is positive pressure which uh, climbs up behind the vitreous and pushes the lens forwards so this is like a very uh, vicious cycle so in the end the um, entry chamber gets shallower and shallower and um, in the end, you get a really flat AC. Now, um, uh, Dr. Quigley has also postulated that not only it's not only an anterior segment problem, actually posterior segment, you find that there is also choroidal effusion, which causes um, this increase in vitreous pressure. And there's something about cases with malignant glaucoma is that the vitreous is a bit more thicker, you know, uh, than usual. So that's why they feel that the aqueous cannot actually penetrate the vitreous that easily. Um, okay, so the common risk factors um, include shallowing of anterior chamber after surgery. It also uh, often occurs in eyes which are small. So history of angle closure, those with hyperopia, also occurs with those with pseudo exfoliation because these are the cases where the lens is, uh, the zonules are lax and the lens can move forward easily and can also occur in cases where there is a lot of uh, intraoperative stress, like patients who are uncooperative during surgery because they do the valsalva maneuver. Diagnosis, mainly clinical, it should look like a acute attack of angle closure glaucoma, and that is when it is you need a high index of suspicion to know that it is not your typical AACG because you still have high IOP, flat AC. However, there is no iris bombay. The AC is flat both centrally and peripherally, and there is usually, I mean, a presence of a patent PI which, which will negate your acute attack of angle closure. And um, also there is no posterior segment abnormality. So there's no supracordial hemorrhage or any cordial detachment causing the shallowing of AC. And you find that these cases worsen with pilocarpine or other conventional treatment. And if let's say you have just um, 
perform a surgery and you still have the paracentesis, you will find that it is very difficult for you to reform the entry chamber um, with the viscoelastic. Now you need a very high index of suspicion, suspicion to know that if it is malignant glaucoma, is the case, uh, is it a pre previously operated case? Uh, has the case got a previous angle closure attack? And if the case actually has a gradual myopic shift postoperatively, and if there is overfiltration following glaucoma surgery, has there been recent laser suture lysis or black needling? Was cycloplegics recently stopped, you know? Um, and this can trigger the attack. Or oppositely, was myotics recent, recently started? And if there is a previous malignant glaucoma attack in the other eye. The diagnosis is by UBM, where you actually see the shallowing of the anterior chamber and the iris corneal touch, the lenticular iris touch. And you can also see the ciliary body, yeah, which is usually rotated anteriorly. Um, in some cases, you can also see ciliary body effusion. And this shows uh, uh, the anterior rotation of the ciliary body towards the iris. And that is why the aqueous is mis misdirected posteriorly. Now, differential diagnosis, um, UBM can help you to differentiate between pupil block glaucoma because in pupil block, sorry, you will find that there is your iris bombay and there is a, uh, actually some aqueous um, posterior to the iris, which is not present usually in malignant glaucoma. And in plateau iris, you see a flat iris um, and you also see an anterior rotation though of the ciliary body, but the iris is flat and the anterior chamber is very deep in plateau iris. Now management, uh, as usual, you go through the medical therapy, if it doesn't work, laser therapy and surgical therapy. So basically what you want to do for medical therapy is you want um, to dilate to, 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 uh, the pupil, you want to relax the zonule so that the, the, um, the lens goes backwards. Um, you need equosuppressants, Osmotic agents, especially agents which, of course, shrinks your vitreous. Yeah? So, for example, your, high, your oral glycerol, your mannitol would work very well. Now, if this doesn't work, then it depends whether the patient is fake it or pseudo fake it. But the basic thing is that you want to um, make a hole, you want to disrupt the anterior hyaloid phase. And, you know, you have to figure a way how to get to this. So, it's easy if you're pseudo fake it, you know, but it's not as easy if you're a fake kick. So if you're a fake kick patient, usually they end up having, you know, as having to have cataract surgery. Now, um, for laser therapy, uh, as mentioned just now, you need to rupture the anterior hyaloid to re re release the trap aqueous from within. So you can do the yet laser through a PI, need to be a large PI, uh, or through the pupil. Or uh, some people have mentioned they can do the laser through the IOL intraocular lens positioning holes. This is, of course, for pseudophagic patients. Um, it, is, it has been mentioned that other laser photocoagulation can be done to shrink ciliary processes, but as you know, it's not easily seen and you need a very large PI to be able to see your ciliary processes through the PI. So uh, transcleral cyclodiode laser is, is usually is helpful. And this case series actually um, advocates application of 20 to 30 pulses over two quadrants. And it is found it is sufficient to break the cycle of the misdirection and actually prevents future recurrences. Now, surgical management is, of course, with pass plana vitrectomy, um, where you actually, you know, remove the vitreous and uh, um, sort of, you know, remove the hyaloid phase. So it's sort of... Uh, uh, you 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 make the anatomy go back to normal. The aqueous would 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 not uh, flow posteriorly. However, uh, some authors have advocated that this is not enough. That you actually need to do a total vitrectomy, and you need to do a tunnel um, where the tunnel is created so that there is actually a tunnel connecting your entry chamber through your iris and through your zonules. All right, and you need to. Um, do a total vitrectomy and shave off the um, the vitreous, anterior vitreous, so that the vitreous does not block this pathway. And only then you won't get recurrences from malignant glaucoma. This is to share with you just a case which was um, uh, published by some of my colleagues a few years ago. A 56-year-old female, uh, known primary angle closure glaucoma, still fake it uh, with a peripheral iridectomy on topical medication. Uh, a year later, she presented with um, symptoms suggestive of malignant glaucoma. There was 
shallowing of the entry chamber and as you can see from this photo the shallowing is actually quite diffuse yeah it's not um you don't have the iris typical iris bombay and it's really really shallow um and this shows that the pi which was run is actually patent so this sort of is uh, highly suggestive of a malignant glaucoma with a shallow ac high iop in the presence of a patent uh, peripheral iridectomy so this was the ubm which was done uh, which was very shallow ac can see the anterior rotation of the ciliary body. Um, so what was done for these patients uh, after she was medically stabilized, they did a phaco emulsification with intraocular lens implant to remove her nucleus sclerotic cataract, and of course, together with the PPV. And you can see postoperatively, the UBM shows a very deep AC. And this is the appearance postoperatively, nice uh, clear cornea, deep AC with a pseudo uh, uh, fake pseudo fakia. Now, this is another case shared by another colleague, Dr. Puspa Raman, a 75 year old lady. Um, she underwent uneventful phaco emulsification, not even known glaucoma. However, she is a hyper rope, uh, has a short axial length. And when she came for routine post op examination, she was noted to have progressively increasing IOP, it was 18, then 22, and then it was like 25, 28. And at the same time, they found that there's a gradual uh, shallowing of the entry chamber. So because of that, she was actually started on um, atropine for two weeks and monitored uh, every few days. But the IOP kept climbing up and the entry chamber did deepen for a while, but again, still started shallowing again. And until the highest IOP reach was 40 millimeter mercury. So this patient uh, straight away was... Um, uh, posted to undergo a uh, phaco PPV. Sorry, just a PPV because this one is already pseudo -fake -it. And you can see after phaco that the entry chamber is nice and deep. So in conclusion, um, malignant glaucoma remains one of the most difficult problems to diagnose and manage in glaucoma surgery. A high index of clinical suspicion is important. Imaging with UBM is essential to support the diagnosis. Surgical management is important to reverse the main pathologic mechanism, and this is to avoid recurrence. Because if you just um, treat the patient medically, you may have to put the patient on atropine for at least a year, if not a lifetime. Thank you very much. How do I unshare? Okay. On the top of the screen, you're... Uh, okay. Uh... My screen stop video. Stop share. Stop share. Okay. Stop share. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay sorry. <laughs>